Oh, hi. And happy holidays, everyone, and welcome to the developer chat here at Privateer Press for December 18th, 2019. You checked the date, didn't you? I did. I always do. <laughs> uh, I'm Will Hungerford, lead developer here at Privateer, and with me is my boss, development manager, uh, Schoonover. Hi. And we have some hot new Monpoc things. To talk literally to hot. Li literally hot. I didn't even realize I made a pun that was totally yeah, unintentional. Yeah. Unintentional uh, puns are the best puns. It is. Today is going to be a very Monpoc themed mm -hmm. uh, dev chat. So stick with us. Uh, speaking of streaming, I want to go over the stream schedule, but I do have a special announcement to make everyone. So normally every Wednesday, oh, we have the double, the double fade there, Tony. Super wipe. <laughs> Super wipe. Uh, every Wednesday, 10 a.m., the dev chat, where myself and Oz mm -hmm. talk about what's going on with War Machine, Riot, Quest, Monpoc, eventually Warcaster. We'll yeah. get there. We'll yeah. get there. One day. Uh, Thursdays to get your paint on with Jordan, where Jordan gets on and paints the mo uh, models we make and goes over tips and tricks with you. And there are two semi-regular shows, The Hobby Hangout with Danny Samuels and or Brian McLaughlin, where they teach you how to convert, make terrain, and just do cool hobby projects. Mm -hmm. And Staff Showdown, which we did two of yesterday. Yeah, super Staff Showdown. Where we play the games we make. Uh, however, the Get Your Paint On Tomorrow is the last stream of the year. We will not be streaming after that show until January 8th. Yeah, so two weeks off. Two weeks off. And that's because ain't no one going to be here. Mm -hmm. I'm so, taking two weeks off. I'm coming back like on the 30th. Yeah. So, uh, speaking of streaming, mm -hmm. did you know we do Twitch subscriptions? That's right. I did know that. If you didn't know, this must be your first time watching, mm -hmm. but we do t Twitch subscriptions. You get a subscriber badge and special emotes, and now there are like special badges that you can colorize your, your yeah. scully and stuff. Like it's, it's reward badges for how many months you've subscribed. Oh, snap. So Tony said he's put in some for six months and things, not that we've gotten there yet, but sure. they're there waiting for you if you subscribe for six consecutive months. And the five year, I mean, you've been subscribed subscribe for five mm -hmm. years, not that you subscribe for five years, but you've been subscribed for five years, mm -hmm. is Mark IV spoilers. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. you just get wow. Mark IV spoilers as your badge. It's the entire thing is a really small graphic that you have to try mm -hmm. and decode. Also, that's a lie. Now, uh, an important thing about that is your Amazon Prime subscription runs out every month and you have to resubscribe it. Yes. So if you're, if you're hoping to get that, like, I've been subscribed for nine months or whatever, you have to stay on that Amazon Prime thing. Mm -hmm. And once we get it to 120 subs, which we are dang close to, yeah. we will unlock the Riot Quest loot coin. So subscribe mm -hmm. if you haven't. We greatly appreciate it. Over on the mini crate side of things, a couple quick announcements. Tomorrow is the last day you can sign up for the Disco Infernal for the mini main yep. War Machine Hordes mini crate. Uh, you have till February 19th to pick up your Transfer Dancer. If you do a VIP subscription, you will get that in the next shipment. Over on the L5R side of things, a few weeks left on uh, Shinjo. Mm -hmm. You get till January 5th, so you know plenty of time left. It is a sweet looking Archer model, great yeah. RPG model. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of great RPG models, the VIP until May 5th is Tingu Sensei. Mm -hmm. Not an angel. Bird person teacher. Bird person teacher. Mm -hmm. We have a new model available on the Savage Mini Crate. Yeah, this one just started a little while ago. Zaltoten. 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 You can pronounce it any way you want. Zaltoten. Yeah. I have the audio book of the, the Conan Omnibus, and he hasn't come up in any of the stories I've listened to so oh, far. Oh, okay. So you haven't so heard I probably, the official... I haven't heard the official pronunciation. Yeah. I believe... It just looks like Zaltoten. That's what I'm it, I think that's how you pronounce it. But so anyway. Who knows? This sweet-ass mummy is available until January yeah. 12th. Speaking of January 12th, that is also the last day that you can sign up with a VIP subscription mm -hmm. and be able to receive Conan on the throne. Yeah. So make sure you do that. Mm -hmm. All right. We got it. We did. Now it's time for you to talk for a very long is it, time. Is it? Me to nod. Just me talking? Just, just, hey, I'm normally the one that does it, man. This is your show now. Sure. It's the Monpoc show. Sure. And you're the Monpoc boss. Mm hmm So... Get it. So we're going to talk about January releases. Hell yeah. Because, you know, it's December, and we usually talk about a month out. Yeah. We, we do solicitations a couple of months out, so people have seen these January models in their render form for a while, mm -hmm. and they've seen the February models in their render form in the solicitation and that kind of stuff. But this is your first chance to see the finalized rules for these models. Dun, dun, dun. And as a special treat, we have a couple of painted models that were at Warfare Weekend in November, but we haven't shown on our streams yet. Yes. So 
We're going to start with some units, right, Tony? So January is a little bit weird. Normally, we release monsters and units in the same fashion in the same month. Yes. So December was Pterodax and then the Bellowers and the Pterodactics. And, and, Zar kind of and uh, Tharsis 5. And Tharsis and the yeah. Reapers and the uh, Harvester. This month is a little bit weird because it's kind of a catch-up month and it's kind of a, a, a new month. Mm -hmm. Because a couple of months ago, we put out Kraken Octus and Hammerclack yes. in the spring. But we didn't put out units with them. We put out some buildings in that month. So this is the first time that Subterran Uprising units and Triton units are going to be in the game. Okay. So we're going to start with the Subterrans, the moles. So they're getting the Brute, which if you've played original Monster Apocalypse, you've seen this guy before. He's a fairly straightforward melee unit with a twist. He's kind of, kind of like a fat ninja. So if you are a Protector player, you've got the uh, C-type Shinobis. I'm sorry, there's a visual playing through oh, my head I know, right now. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, go ahead. Chris, Chris Farley. No, I was totally. thinking about there's a, series, a Deadpool series where he gets trapped in space for like decades. Oh, uh, right. But his body keeps going. Like he's just a, kind of in a coma. Oh. And he wakes up and he's super fat and like okay. jammed into a spaceship. Sure. And then he goes, he, never mind. Yeah. Okay, so these guys, if, if you've been playing as protectors for a while with C-types, uh, these guys are a little similar. They're speed five with high mobility because they're moles, so they gonna dig under things. Mm -hmm. And they're cloak because one of the mole things is kind of hiding until they're ready to hit you. Sure. So Hammerclack also has cloak in his alpha, so these guys have cloak. And then as a tiny, tiny bonus, they also have Demolisher because they have those jackhammer hands. Mm -hmm. So they can try to get you extra power dice if they lead a combined attack on a building. So that's kind of a desperation move of if your opponents shut you down on power production, you can have your units try to knock a building down to get some power for you. Mm -hmm. And these guys are better at that because they can, they can get you plus one. But yeah. you're not gonna probably use that ability or, or have it come up and play a lot, but it's there for the utility. Yeah, I mean, they're pretty solid when you look at like, because like, predictors and destroyers, you have to compare them to everything else that kind of falls in the same category. Right? Yeah. So we're obviously looking at like chompers. Yeah. Your baseline, I walk up and yeah. punch you, dude. And these are a little bit more mobile. Yeah, they, they've got the mobility on the chompers, but they don't have the hitting power. Right. But they also have the defense in that cloak. Right, you're, you're trading the straight hitting power of, of, mm -hmm. of baseline chompers for survivability and mobility, which yeah. is, depending on your, your build, a pretty fair trade. Yeah. And these guys are the mainline unit in this blister, so they also get an uh, elite, mm -hmm. which just, of course, adds a blue die and gives you the commander ability on that thing. Okay. Tony can, Tony can show that whenever he wants. There we go. Yay, so, Tony! <laughs> so, just the commander ability, just like you would expect uh, on I love Elite. that man. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to show you the specialist in this, this pack. And this, is, uh, this might be my favorite thing releasing this month. Because it's the Moloch Berserker. I always love these guys in the old game. They're sculpt. They're popping out of the ground. And they got like scary drill face and giant, giant claw hands. He does have a drill face. He does have a drill face. Yeah. And it's labeled as secondary weaponized digging system on his cards. It's a drill face. It's a drill face. Okay. Yeah, he's got a drill nose. The right. other guy has like a classic star nose mole kind of face, like a, yeah. a different digging implement. Mm -hmm. This guy, he's got, a, he's got a drill face. So this is a specialist. Uh, the, the most important thing you're going to notice about him is he's a lone wolf. So he cannot combine with other models for attacks. Sure. Much like the, the rocket hawk. ape, the explodo hawk, yeah. the... Uh, the Hunter on the Martian side. Right. But to compensate for that, he's got pretty good boost dice. Yeah, and he also kills two things a turn, probably. And, and if, if he's fighting in a clump of things, he can kill a thing and then scoot underground and smack something else. Nice. And just flat out riled? And then he's so angry that if he ever dies, he's mad that you know, he didn't get to kill more things, mm -hmm. so he gives you a power die. Okay. So yeah. I mean, so he's pretty fast. He's speed six with high I, ability, so he can really get around fast. the board. And then if he punches things, he can go a little bit faster, basically. He can get a little, little farther in. And he's de deaf too, solid. Yeah, he's, okay. he's deaf too. He doesn't have cloak, he's not subtle. He's just like, you know, screaming at you. Is this the first model with Berserk? Uh, it is the first model with Berserk. Yeah. Berserk is a brand new ability, uh, and this, often I create abilities on later models 
and then I put them on earlier models. Like, I was designing Ignite, the action that lights Rubble on fire, yes. for Incineris. Mm -hmm. But then the Scorchers came out before him, and I was like, well, Scorchers are like about breathing fire and stuff, so we'll give them Ignite too. So you're saying Berserk's gonna appear on something later on. So the, uh, the Draken Armada, the, the protectors that are coming out in the summer. Space Dragons? Yeah, they have a, a Berserker. Monster, they have, or you? No, they have, they have, so like I said on the stream the other day, they have Dragon People mm -hmm. as part of their faction, and they have Fusiliers, which are dragon like soldiers. Sure. And then they also have a, a Draken Berserker, which is a dragon man with double, double gun swords. I'm sorry, you say dragon man with double gun swords? And dragon man with double gun swords. Woo! Yeah. He, he's going to play a little bit differently than, than the Moloch. So this is the straight up anime faction is what you're saying. It's a little bit. It's yeah. good guy dragons from space. So yeah, yeah. So that's, your little, that's your little future teaser for this episode too. Got it. Okay, so um, that's the bad guy side. On the good guy side, we're doing Triton units. And we're focusing on the fishy stuff because Krakenakis came out. And there was, in the original Tritons back in the first version of the game, there were also Atlantean submarines and right. stuff, which I haven't decided exactly what we're going to do with some of that stuff yet. So we're focusing still on the sea creatures. The sea monster side yeah. of it, yeah. So we're doing the steel shell crab as the first thing. Mm. Uh, they're kind of giant fiddler crabs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but with uh, steel shell shells. But with, yeah, with shells that are like steel. They turn away bullets as if they were metal or whatever description <laughs> we wrote. So uh, these guys are a very, very basic defensive unit. They, they have speed four, def four. So they're on the high end of the defense, but also on the super low end it's of movement. Speed four, def four, all terrain. So, so far, so, G-tank. So they're very G-tank-like in that speed four, def four, and all terrain. Mm -hmm. The thing that they get above the G-tanks when it comes to mobility is amphibious. Yeah, they can go in the water. So normally, you'd have to hold a building with water next to it with the, a flying model. Yeah. But with the Triton units, you can put a ground model in there, and ground models generally have higher defense than flying models. Mm -hmm. So this gives you a little bit more flexibility on those maps with that important like corner spot on a double building. But also on Isle of Annihilation, it lets, it lets your units get a little bit more mobile because all that water on the edge of So you, you can crab flank people. You can crab flank people. Yeah. So the other thing these guys do to super double down on that defensiveness, because G-Tanks can still be offensive while they're holding territory because they have range five. Right. So they can reach out and hit things. But they, they don't get a normal blue. They have to aim to yeah. get a blue. Yeah. So their, their job and, and kind of what they're telling you to do rules-wise is sit still and, and shoot things that come close to you. These guys don't have a gun, so we gave them dig in, which is also the first time dig in has appeared on yeah, this side of the game. On protectors, right. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, well, dig in on a, on a core unit. Um, the, the Brontox has dig in, but that's a cost two yeah, special. Yeah, yeah. So this is a mainline cost one dig in model. It's still only speed four. It's not going to get to a lot of places, but that gives it a little bit more. I still think that G tanks have a strong place in the game because of their range attacks. And there may be a monster in the future that makes G tanks better sure. kind of thing. But these guys are, are right along the same category as G tanks if, if you're playing you know, on a watery and map. And they, they don't just have to move sideways. You can no, go, they, you can they go can, forward, diagonal. Now, now, narratively, you should always turn the model sideways yes. in the direction it's moving because yes. it's a crab, and they have to do that kind of thing. Um, and uh, like normal, they are the mainline fighter in this one, so they get an elite. So same thing as last time, a better, better blue die and commander, steel show crab. Vandeby says, crab flank, do you mean a pincher maneuver? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's exactly what we mean. Yeah. How would you paint your steel shell crab commander to look different than your regular uh, steel shell crab? I'm not sure. There's so, many, there's so many ways that crabs look visually. One of the things I really like about the way people have painted Kraken Octus and some other natural creatures mm -hmm. in the game is they look at things in nature. Like, there's people that have oh, yeah. painted Kraken Octus like cuttlefish and like different octopuses and stuff. So I really, I really think there's a lot of interesting natural inspiration out there so in the crab world. Fluff-wise, when people paint these, just a quick question. Mm -hmm. Are their shells actually metallic, or are they just tough as metal? They could have some metal in them. Okay. It just depends. Okay. So somebody wanted to want. paint metallic blue and metallic you could red. Paint, you could paint shiny silver crabs all day long if you wanted They're to. called steel shell. I know. Okay. Yeah. Good yeah, yeah. Okay, so, and then the specialist... Specialist in this blister pack is a little spicy. So, 
Uh, the Psy Eel, that's been its name the entire time, since 2009 or whatever, when this model originally was introduced to Monster Apocalypse. It's mm -hmm. been a Psy Eel. But it didn't really have a psychic kind of ability mm -hmm. in the old game. It, it's kind of haunting my nightmares right now. Is that a, a worm with a face? It, it's an eel. It's, it's, a, it's a wormy kind of snake with a scary tooth face. Okay. Um, so that you're going to see a lot, of, a lot of interesting things about this model, but the biggest thing is its telekinesis on the protector side. Which they don't have. Which the Taskmaster and some monsters on the uh, uh, Cthulhu Grass specifically. Right. <clears throat> You've had telekinesis as an option as a destroyer player, but you haven't had it as a protector player. So these psychic eels have telekinesis. And then it's got hazardous, which is new, right? Hazardous is, is another one of those old abilities that's coming back into the game. Right. Um, it in, and it's kind of that electric eel kind of vibe. The Toxos, by the way, also have hazardous. The, the little blob monsters are coming out later this year. So if you ramp, ne later next year. If you collide with it or, or rampage. Yes, but it's specifically enemy models. This, this guy won't bite a friend that lands on him. Ooh, and if that's a, for each one you collide with, you take a point of damage? For each one you collide with. So if you have, a say, four of them. Yeah. In, in a nice little square, uh -huh. and you body slam a monster into that exact square, mm -hmm. they take five points of damage? Yeah, but these things are cross two. They're gonna be hard to get. But they're basically little buildings. Yeah, they're tiny buildings. That's super good. Yeah. That's crazy good. And, and mobility-wise, they're speed six with high mobility, because they kind of float, because they're, they're psychic. They Hold on. Kind of levitate. So these are tooth-faced flying psyker eels? Uh-huh, yeah. Nope. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm they have amphibious. I'm out. They have amphibious too because that's a theme of the Triton units that they can sit in water. Sure. So you, what you're saying is nowhere is safe. Nowhere is safe. They can fly, they can swim, and they can be on land. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when Leviathan comes out, the armored shark thing, he's going to give a bonus to units because Krakenoctus didn't have a allied faction units get a bonus thing because there weren't any. Sure. But. Usually, there's a monster that makes units better in the faction and sometimes a, a more selfish monster. Mm -hmm. Some factions have an ability for every one of their monsters that makes units better, but not all. No. Yeah. But Leviathan is definitely going to be a thing that is a more cohesive Triton force now that there's some Triton units on the table. Uh, Valtrexium on Twitch calls them nightmare tubes, which I agree with 100%. Yeah. Easily, like, people talk about Cthulhu having weird things like the Meat Slave. Yeah. This is way worse. Well... Is it though, dude? The meat slave is a bubbly egg of of it's a, things. It's a flying amphibious psychic well, sure. nightmare eel. Sure, this thing as a predator is more terrifying. Oh, I'm sorry. It's also electric. It's a little electric. It might be psychic electricity. Do you realize the <laughs> psychic electricity? Psychic electricity. I'm out. Yeah. Okay. So that was the two blisters, the subterranean uprising, and the tritons. That was the catch-up for a previous release. Yes. And now we're introducing a brand new couple of factions that are not completely brand new because they existed in Monster Apocalypse 1. But these are the first... But this is the first time the Elemental Champions and Savage Swarm have existed in this version. Very game. excited for Savage Swarm. Yeah. Like... So we're going to talk about Savage Swarm first. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to save, I'm gonna save the biggest, craziest thing for last. Or is that showing the models off? That's, no, that's in Cinerus's rules. Oh, sure. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's, he's nuts. So... Zizorax is the very first Savage Swarm model. He is quite possibly the most direct, basic, straightforward model that we've ever made for this game. He does a thing. He does it really well. He rampages. Yes. So you've seen Rampage before. Tharsis 5 had it. So Tharsis 5 has a little bit of Rampage functionality, mm -hmm. but Zizorax is just about Rampage. And, and like I said before, I created Rampager for Zizorax, and then Tharsis, I needed to give Star Tharsis something interesting. And so we, we stuck that on him to make him a little bit more interesting. So the first thing you're going to notice is Rampager. So you get a bonus power die for every model you kill during a Rampage power yeah. attack. So buildings and units. That means, like the other day in playtest, I rolled nine power dice, I got nine power dice back. But also don't Rampage Psy Eels, because you'll just die. You'll get hurt, but it might be worth it. No. Because you'll get a power die back for him. Yeah. And... And Juggernaut, which is a fairly lengthy ability, mm -hmm. but Juggernaut is a reason to rampage over things that might be dangerous because it's for the first time a way that rampaging monsters hurt other monsters. Mm -hmm. So normally Rampage says you move over everything that you roll better than the defense of, right. but if you hit a monster, you stop. 
Right. And nothing happens to that monster. You just walk up to Even the if you rolled a million hits. Stop. You yes. just stop. This ability says if you rolled equal to that monster's defense, you also smack them for one damage. He's got that great big giant crazy horn thing on his head. Yeah. So he's running at you, and if, if you stop him, then you take a damage. He hits you with his big beetle yeah. horn. And then it also says if he's hyper, it's super damage. Oh, we're going to look at the hyper form real fast? No, it's in that ability. Oh, it's in that ability. Juggernaut is on both sides of the card, and to save space, I just put the hyper stuff on. So super damaging rampages. Yeah. Seems legit. Yeah. So uh, the other thing you'll notice is he's riled because he doesn't have a ranged attack. So I, I gave him riled so that if he's getting plinked from a distance by somebody like Rogzor or General Hondo, yeah. he's getting a reward back for it. And for a little bit more mobility, he has action sprint and high mobility in his alpha form because he's got big crazy wings, which we'll look at on the model in a second. Mm -hmm. But those wings don't survive very deep into combat because they're, they're very fragile. He, is, he, he does what he does well. Yeah, and as a small little bonus, he has Penetrator on his Brawl attack because he's probably smashing you with that big horn. Sure. And, and it's just it's pretty good at hurting things. I dig it. So when he goes hyper, he stays pretty much the same. He loses high mobility. Oh, Lord, he has Weapon Master on his power attacks. But he has Weapon Master on his power attacks. Does that stack with Juggernaut? Uh, no, because Juggernaut... The way that Rampage works, it doesn't hurt the monster. Juggernaut's a bonus to hurting the monster. Oh, it's a, okay, it says it is super damage instead. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So Weapon Master is, is for body slams and throws and even swats. And this is a thing that, that Gorgadra has loved forever, is swatting things into monsters for mm -hmm. super damage. Mm -hmm. But he can do it now, too. Nice. So he keeps Penetrator on his Brawl attack. He gets Weapon Master on his power attacks. He keeps Riled. He keeps Rampager, he, he keeps Juggernaut, but he gains Rampant Destruction, yeah. which says he can reposition for free before he does a, a Rampage, which up, is super powerful. Up to three spaces, right? Up to three spaces. So, oh. so Sprint, so people have seen this on, on Hammerclack and on alpha versions of him. Sprint gives you that little bit of, I need to, to, I need to yeah, move yeah. better before I Rampage. But this says you can just do that for free. If you do a Rampage power attack, he gets to move a little bit before he goes. So you're not very safe from his, his Rampages if you're trying to position like, oh, he's there and he doesn't have enough dice to, to move enough and that kind of thing. So this is Rampage. So this is, he's a, he's a, giant, monster. He's a giant rhinoceros. His, his job is to run through things. He's a rhino beetle. Them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I did. And, and Juggernaut was an ability that he had in the first version of Monster Apocalypse. So I've just... He, Just reuse that ability. He isn't a giant bee, but he He's is not a giant bee. pretty dang cool. The other thing you'll notice versus his alpha form is he has 11 health. He stays in hyper longer than he stays in alpha. He also so loses high mobility. He also loses high mobility, but he gains that little bit of positioning during yeah. oh, those yeah. rampages. So he's still really mobile. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. For sure. And now, now the craziest thing I've ever done. Ever. I've, I, we've had a lot of conversations have, about this, this guy. This model has been playtested probably more than anything has been playtested since the, the relaunch of the game. So since we were originally playtesting like Defender X and Sky Sentinel and all yeah. those things to get the game right, we've done a lot and a lot and a lot of playtests for Incinerous. Because and when, I, when I start to make a model Because he has, game, mm -hmm. I usually come up with one thing that they're going to do. Like, like Zizorax was... He's a rampager. Mm -hmm. And then like Armadax is, he's super durable. Armadax is, he's really durable. And that then kind of like thing. Defender X, he's really... Defender X wants to protect things. Defender so, like, We always think of, even if it's only a small ability on their final form, like Safeguard on Defender X, it's still that, that what is this, the core essence of this character. Sure. Well, Incinerous is on fire. He's literally made of fire. Right, he's an elemental champion yeah. of fire. So how could fire possibly hurt him? Well, he's made of it. Sure. Yeah. So, Tony, bring up that alpha form of Incinerous. Also, people are going to notice this immediately. He has eight health. He has eight health. That well, is the most blatantly apparent thing about this monster. He has eight health. Yes. But keep in mind, every time you throw him into a building, it's generally minus one damage because the fire's not going to hurt him. Toward the late game, when all there is is fire on the table because all the buildings, especially those central buildings, are dead, mm -hmm. a throw does one damage to him. 
Yeah, because he's got fireproof. Because he's got fireproof. He's immune to hazards. Yeah, so the two core things about this model that we started on was low health because of fireproof. Now, he started with nine health, but we dialed him down mm -hmm. because um, one of the things that's really, really important when you're playing a head-to-head -head battling game is psychologically beating your opponent. Mm -hmm. If you can prove to your opponent that you have won in some sort of subtle way, that might not be true. This is so dark. They, op they often, it's a lot like poker. Like, often winning a game of poker is about convincing your opponent you've already won. Whether that's by subterfuge or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Which confidence. So we don't have that in, in most miniatures games, and Monster Apocalypse doesn't have it. So you can't be like, I have, War Machine. I have beat you because look at all these things I'm going to do to you. Mm -hmm. It's really, the thing we learned the most when fighting against Incinerous is it's really demoralizing to try and do damage to him because you're like, oh, I've lined him up for the double building throw, but it's only three damage. It's kind of the Armadax effect. So right? it's got that Armadax thing. He's really, really tanky because fire doesn't hurt him. So it, it's one of those things where you just have to focus on him. Now, Armadax, the trade-off he, he makes is he's only defense seven in alpha form. Right. So he, units can pretty easily attack Armadax. You can just plank him down. Incinerous is a ninja. Right. He's def nine. So he's speed def seven, nine. Speed seven, speed high, mobi seven high mobility. Yeah. So we had to take away his health to compensate for that. But he's still very, very tanky because every time you throw him or body slam him, it's at least minus one or minus two damage. And mm -hmm. at the late game, Faye and I just played a game the other day where I was like, okay, I have to body slam him to line him up for another body slam on my next monster turn, but this body slam is going to do one damage. But there was a building on the corner of the map, and so if I body slammed him once, I could reposition him to body slam him into that building. Mm -hmm. And then Faye filled that area I needed to land in with units, so I couldn't do anything. So he's very difficult to fight against. You know what's a really good counter to him? Zizrax. Zizrax is just, one of the good counters. You just rampage through the unit screening him sure. and then hit him and do, do yeah. super damage. That's one amazing. Of other, one of the other really interesting counters to him is Zor Raiden. Because Zor Raiden has flank and weapon master in hyper. Mm -hmm. So Zor Raiden's better at punching people and he doesn't care about throwing people and stuff. He can get two damage on you either way. So the rest of his abilities are he has action at night so he can light things on fire. Yep. Um, he's going to need to do that sometimes because he has Feed the Flames, which is an edge case ability that gets more and more and more powerful as the game goes on. Because mm -hmm. it says he gets Penetrator on his attacks if his target is in or adjacent to a hazard. So he can use the fire near you yeah. to hit you harder. So early game, it's not going to do anything at all because there's not going to be a lot of fires. But late game, when the map is just all fire, right. it's going to matter a lot. And then he has Return Fire, which is mostly just a joke, because I love it. But he has a range 5 blast attack, and he has def 9, so you're going to miss him. So if units try to team up on him and miss, he then he can just get a free attack with those dice, which might be against the monster. Uh, Sabian Asher on Twitch says, are Elemental Champions protectors? Yes, they yes. are. Elemental Champions are protectors because they're, they're good guys. And the Savage Swarm, even though they are things from Earth, they're mindless, like, murdering monsters. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're very locust in their theme. The other thing um, to kind of set aside his, his set, make a difference between his alpha and his hyper is he has precision fire, a uh, precision strike on his blasts. So he's really good at like pinpointing things with his fireballs sure. at range five. Um, but that changes when he goes hyper because he gets really crazy. Got a couple of questions people asking if he's affected by grappler. Uh, yeah, he is. Grappler just says, well, so if grappler says you're not immune to things, then it does affect him. Mm -hmm. so, there you so that's go. the trade-off. Read the rules as they're written. Grappler says models are not, I believe, immune or can't ignore or whatever mm -hmm. hazards adjacent to this model. And this guy says he's immune. Just like flying says this model's immune to hazards except when it collides. So that's the same text effectively. So, so gra yeah. grapplers are real so good. So if you against. hold him down in the fire, then it does hurt him a little bit. So grapplers do... Uh, do a little bit better against him. So that, that's also, Kraken Octus is gonna be putting out the fires that he lights. They're just gonna be like going back and forth. Just dancing. Flipping tokens over all the time. Fair. Okay, so his hyper form Boop. gets uh, crazier. So he keeps fireproof. He, of course, only has four health in his form. Yep. Um, he keeps high mobility, speed seven, def nine. And feed the flames. And feed the flames. But he gets fire step, which is kind of like waterlogged. It just happens. So a lot of pl playtest games, with him, you walk one space farther than he could, than he needs to walk, and then come back mm -hmm. to touch 
a rubble tile to light it on fire. Right. Yeah. So the whole map is on fire at the end of the game, regardless of what you want to do, unless you really are using your waterlogged and extinguishers and that kind of stuff. Right. <clears throat> His blast becomes shorter range, but gets explosion because he goes from pinpointing things to just to hurling just like fireballs, throwing the biggest fireballs ever. Yep. <clears throat> and then his brawl also effectively explodes. Chain reaction is the same ability as explosion, but just without the defense thing. And he's got lightning attack. So he can punch. If, if, if you have a whole bunch of units, he can just walk up and punch those units and blow all of them up. He feels like a glass cannon to me. That is what, when we were talking about what this model should be, that was very much what we decided. That he's super offensive. Mm -hmm. he's, he's got some defensive tech, but... You can wear him down easy if you just consistently hit him, but consistently hitting him is, is not the easiest thing in the world because of that def nine. Right. But and flanking can bring it down to eight, and spotter can bring it down to eight, he, so you can still hit he's him. He's weakest in the early game. He and, is weakest in the early game. And his power just goes up and up and up the more things that are mm -hmm. on fire. Yeah. Late game, he's super powerful, so my advice to you would be hit him as early as possible and as often as possible to get rid of him. Because if you don't, and you take out your opponent's grappler yeah. monster or yeah. whatever else might be a good counter, like Zizorax, yeah. and you're left with something that doesn't grate into Incinerous, mm -hmm. he will start running the board. Yeah. Faye and I played a playtest game where Faye kept Incinerous in the back, mm -hmm. shooting every once in a while and that yeah, kind of stuff, and ran with, I don't remember which monster she was playing on the, it might have been White Dijon, but she played with one monster up front, and I beat that monster to death. But then, like, all the buildings were gone in the middle of the board and all that stuff. And then Incinerous came in and just did whatever he wanted to do. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, Incinerous and Zorb Maxim is a pretty strong combo. Mm -hmm. Have Zorb Maxim do the majority of the work and pinpoint the monster you really need to take yep. out. And then, if you can get to, like, monster activation five around that point in the game mm -hmm. with Incinerous still alive, running around the board, setting everything yeah. on fire, it's legitimately a problem. Yeah. But I played a playtest game where I tried to play him more offensively early on. And he just didn't last. He still did things. He still, oh, yeah. he still was very, very important in that game. He just didn't survive to the late game because he only has eight health. It's like he's a ticking time bomb. He is. He's, he's a giant fireball of rage. No, we have the painted, And we have real models. We have the guys. painted models for yeah. both Incinerous and Zizorax. Tony, okay, which one do you want to talk about first? So um, let's, let's talk about Zizorax. Since, since we were just talking about Incinerous, let's yeah. talk about Incinerous first. So if you were in St. Louis at Warfare Weekend, you saw these guys in the case. Jordan finished painting them slightly before that show started. So like we said, big, giant, flaming ninja. If you don't know the backstory of the Elemental Champions, they are a, an order of monks that have access to magical armor. Mm -hmm. So they're a little bit like Zors. They're people who grow really big. But they do it by putting on this magical armor and then infusing it with the element of their choice. Right. They're so there's, a, there's an earth one and a water one and a fire, a fire one and an air one. But this is the very first one because... Is there a heart one? There's not a heart one yet. I mean, maybe anything's possible. But um, I wanted to bring Incinerous into the game before Tectomach or the other ones mm -hmm. because I wanted to play around with fire and lighting... Sure, yeah. back on fire because we have waterlogged so in a game with Kraken Octus you can easily have a game where there's just no fire left let's do another little spinny spin show, mm -hmm. show him all the way around yeah. yeah so he's got some cool gym elements which we haven't really had on Monster Apocalypse models that much there's a couple of gym type things on some Ubercorp models and you get to play around a lot with flame effects with you know playing around with the, the, the heat and the cool of flame because the, way, the proper way to paint flames is lightest in the hottest part and darkest in right. the coolest part. So sometimes people paint, paint flames backwards, but that's how you're supposed to paint flames. So yeah, there uh, you go. Over on Zizorex, there's a cool little surprise in Zizorex if you haven't seen the painted model. I'm going to actually pick him up here. First off, how did this bug get this swole? How do, how do, why does this bug have muscles? And not just like, these are fleshy muscles. Yeah. He also has little tiny, tiny, tiny arms. Little slap in your arms. Little slap in your arms? Yeah, little slap in your arms. Where, where, where? They're under his, there's a, they're under his pecs. Oh, like, he like, has nipple fists? He has, he has little arms that come out of his armpits and then just, just go right along. So hold on, this is a, this is a, a, a buff bug with nipple fists? It's basically, yeah. Man, Oz, and you thought Riot Quest was weird. But here's the little surprise, aside from freaking nipple fists. <laughs> 
His little wings in the back. Yeah. He's a beetle. Look at that. He's got wings. And that's what I was saying, that they're fairly fragile because they're bug wings. Yeah. So they don't last until the, the later part of the battle. Yeah, they get you know, burnt off. They get a little bit beat up. They can regrow because he's probably some I'm, sort of giant radioactive creature. He does have little weird freaking hands under yeah. his, his, uh, his pecs. Yeah. Also, his pecs. Just one more time, I'm going to say that. Yeah, the, the bugs in the original game, if you remember any of their sculpts, a lot of them had multiple arms. Uh, Mucostis is my favorite because he's kind of fat. He's like a big cockroach. And his extra arms are just rubbing his belly. Like sure. all like, like, you know, mastermind like. All right. So yeah. Hashtag, so there's, hashtag nipple fist. There's, there's those guys. Yeah, those are really cool. So yeah. this is all dropping in This is January. January. Okay. This is the very first Elemental Champions models, which they'll probably get another monster and some units in the fall or early, early, early next year. Not, mm -hmm. not next year, next year, but 2021. Because we have, we have some other exciting stuff that's coming out for the rest of the spring. Mm -hmm. And then we have the two new factions launching in the summer. So the next time we're going to come back to anything like this is fall or early 2021. Cool. All right. Yeah. That sounds really exciting. Is uh, there anything, is there anything I missed on the, on the chit chats? Uh, well. Someone does mm, want magic, giant magic heart armor. Thanks for that. I mean, there's so many other elements we could do. Yeah. You know, fire, air, earth. Water, yeah. love. Yeah. The internet. Tony. Is the internet an e element? Technology. Yeah. Are we going to go all uh, American gods on this? No, no, we're not. No. Okay. No. Um, so, yeah, if you've got any questions you want to ask, we are going to take a little, see what yeah. the chat's got to ask us. So Snow Tiefling we'll is begging for Mucostis, and Mucostis was on my release schedule earlier. Mm -hmm. Like, this, this slot was Mucostis. But I really wanted to play around with this rampaging thing. Sure. And Mucostis, in the original game, I believed that um, it could summon. So it could like lay eggs or whatever. And, and there's not enough and, units out. And first. there's no units for this faction. So I, I, I rearranged it to put Zizorax first because Zizorax is a much more straightforward, in your face, smashy, smashy kind of thing. Uh, Brother Chaplin K says, what's the release date for the new paints this month? Uh, if there are any new paints coming out in heard. December, it would be at the end of the month, like the 20, yeah. 28th, I think. I think the 27th might be the release date this month. But I haven't heard about paints, and that's not our job. So, Yeah, sorry, sorry I don't have more information yeah. on the new paint releases. Uh, I, any so, news from Monster Apocalypse organized play in 2020? So, we are going to rotate out the prizes. Yes. So the, 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 the store that won the contest is going to be the next building. Yep. And then um, since we're kind of rolling through the, the foil cards mm -hmm. in the order of releases, we're going to do December of 2018 foil cards. So that is Terracon and Ares. Okay. So that, that hits all the six original monsters that released for the game in foil cards. Got it. And then um, the other thing about organized play is we have been playtesting that balancing element of first turn in tournaments, and it's working out fairly well. So it's possible that early in the year, uh, there's going to be an errata in January, but also early in the year there might be a crush hour update that, that plays around with some of the tournament first player stuff. Yep. Uh, speaking of uh, errata updates, uh, just for those of you wondering about the War Machine dynamic update, basically when this is done, my watch turned upside down, uh, maybe like the next hour or so, it's probably going to launch. I say that. <laughs> I want you to know. Careful with the promises. Anything can go wrong. But if everything goes right, the dev chat ends, some buttons are pressed, the War Machine December dynamic update occurs, yay. Mm -hmm. Something can go wrong. We'll see. We'll see. So Agent Orange wants to know, uh, it's, they're calling it the PVE March release, but it's the, the co-op two players versus a AI monster thing, just, mm -hmm. to, just to be clear. That got bumped a little bit schedule -wise. when we were planning schedules. We moved it around a little bit, and we put uh, Green Fury and the Waste, the Blob stuff, in March. So I'm not going to promise that April is when that comes out. But it's not going to be in March. It's going to get pushed a little bit back. But there's also something bigger and cooler coming out for the game before Lock and Load 2, if everything lines up. 
printing wise. Yep. It's not that co-op thing, but is but is another way you play Monster, Monster Rockalypse. Uh, let's see. Snow Tiefling wants to know if we can say any units that we're playtesting for Savage Swarm. I don't know if you're ready to... Announce. I haven't started playtesting units for Savage Swarm yet. I'm very focused on up until lock and load right now, which I'm not going to talk about the specifics. And then the very first thing we're going to start testing probably in January is the Draken Armada stuff and the Zerkalo block. And that, once we get the summer releases done, then we'll go on to the, the fall slash early spring. Now... I will tell you that the thing on the top of my list for the Savage Swarm is the Spy Fly. I love the Spy Fly. <laughs> sure. It's got gigantic eyeballs and it's a, it's a, it's a fly. It's like a house fly. Um, but more importantly, it's a spotter for destroyers. Which is... Because protectors have two spotters. And destroyers right have now. None. And destroyers well, they have, have Ares, they, they have Ares, I think. They have none of units. So they don't have a unit that's a spotter. So the Spy Fly is definitely on the top of my list for a specialist in that first blister. Mm -hmm. But we'll figure out when we start playtesting the next monster and that kind of stuff what the faction kind of needs to be more real. Mm -hmm. And so it might not be the Spy Fly, but definitely the Spy Fly is what I want. I haven't picked... I haven't sorted through... If we're gonna do any of the original classic like mainline fighters for the units, or if we're gonna think up something new, because they had grasshoppers and ants and beetles and something else, maybe I can't remember. I don't remember either. I don't remember. There needs to be more bees though. For but sure. of course, there needs to be more bees. Yeah. And Di Dynastivus, the giant wasp slash bee monster, might be might be on the schedule eventually. But we got a couple of questions about not. the the reprinting or new fabric. Uh, the neoprene Mompok maps. Do you mm -hmm. have any news about those at the moment? Or we no? don't. Okay. That stuff is, we're figuring out um, timelines and reprinting and all that kind of stuff, but we don't have anything to announce officially schedule-wise because making promises is dangerous. Yeah, like the dynamic update's going to happen in an hour or so. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, yeah. what could go wrong? Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, speaking of which, I think we're going to go ahead and get out of here. Yeah. Unless you saw any other questions you wanted to hit. And then uh, I'm going to roll on to the dev office and start just doing this. Really? Really? Actually, most of it is in other people's hands right now. It's, it's, yeah. it's other people yeah. uploading the files. I, I really... Yeah. Everything I, has been proofed. Just got to wait for it to happen. Tony, did you start playing the music on us? You said we were done. Just going to play us off? You said we were done. Do you do? No, no, it's okay. I feel like Frank Sinatra at the end of the, uh, the awards that one year where they played him off. Oh, I did forget. This is, this is to support you. <laughs> I did forget not one to, thing. Not to rush you. Power, Power Gorge is asking a relevant question that's something I forgot. So uh, the errata will be covering one thing in specific, because if you go back and look at Incinerus's card, mm -hmm. his Ignite has different wording than the Scorcher's Ignite. So there's been a lot of confusion on what Ignite does. And technically, by the way the rules were written, if you light a fire under a monster, it doesn't hurt them because you have to move into a hazard to take damage right. from it. So if you were already there, you're not technically moving into it when it flips over and becomes a hazard under you. So, that, so to clear up that confusion, I've just literally put in the old text from Ignite that said, models that are on the rubble tile when it flips collide with it. Sure. So, cool. so there you go. It, 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 the original wording destroyed all the units on the tile mm -hmm. automatically, mm -hmm. but now it's a collision, so it triggers on monsters and mm -hmm. something will clarify. So the errata will at least have a Scorcher errata for Ignite and a few other typos and clarifications like that. Sure. Um, and then the other thing we're going to do is we errated the triggering text, the triggering concept mm -hmm. in the very first FAQ, mm -hmm. but I'm going to errata that into the rulebook now because the exosuits mentioned say, use the word trigger, so it's literally much more of a real rule now. So I'm just going to put it that text back in the book in a very specific way. Okay. So those uh, kind of small things. Okay. So as a reminder so, to everybody, we're 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 gonna we're gonna leave for real this time. Tony, hit me with some music. Let's let's start building it up. Whatever you're in the mood for, some Wu Tang Clan. No. Okay. <laughs> This is the last week we're streaming until January 8th. We will have Get Your Paint On tomorrow, mm -hmm. but after that, we're off for the holidays. It's the last time we are streaming until the 8th. For sure. Uh, Privateer will only be streaming us, tomorrow. Either of us is guesting tomorrow, no. are we? No. Okay. Thanks to everyone who subscribed during the show. Thanks to all of you who are subscribed to us. And yeah. uh, thanks to everybody for watching. Uh, it's time to go keyboard cat some stuff in the dev office and see if we can get the dynamic update out there. So, goodbye. Yeah, and that little tiny bonus we didn't mention during the thing is if you subscribe this month, 
Twitch gives you some holiday themed emotes too. Sure. Like little animated snowmans doing weird things and corgis dresses Rudolph. So yeah, it's all kinds of cool stuff. We'll see you guys in the later times next year. <laughs> the later times. Next what does it even mean?